Hi guys, this is Mrs. Lane and I am the AIM teacher at Blue Bonnet Trail Elementary and Presidential Meadows Elementary. And today I want to talk to you about some at-home learning options for you while we're all staying home and staying healthy. But before I get started, I just want to let you know that we miss you so much and we hope that you're doing well and we can't wait to see your smiling faces and hear your laughter again. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. I created a document that's going to be on our AIM website. The GT teachers created a website for you guys to all visit that houses any information that you might need. These, this site is in addition to a Google Classroom, if your teachers had that. I know that my fifth graders are used to a Google Classroom or Class Dojo, or whatever it is that your own AIM teacher is using. That still is going to exist, but we also now have this site as well. So if you want to do a research project at home, and this is very much like what we would have been doing in class anyway if we were still in school, um, I'm going to sort of walk you through the steps. There's a website that is created for the entire state of Texas called the Texas Performance Standards Project. And this document tells you step by step what you can do. So step one, it says go to the Texas Performance Standards Project website. And this is a hyperlink that you can click on and it will take you to the website. And the website is a group of projects sorted by grade levels that are based on the TEKS and they were designed for you guys, gifted and talented students, um, grades 12 through kinder or kinder through 12. Um, and the website is organized by grade level. So you guys would scroll to the fifth grade section and look at all the different projects that are there. I think for fifth grade there are 11 maybe 12 different projects for you to choose from. When I say projects, you'll see they're like topics to research. So step two, it says choose which task or project you'd like to research. How, do, how are you going to select which one? Well, think about things like this. Does it spark your interest? Is it something that you would really want to be um, committed to and in finding more information? Is it something you've always wondered about? Um, and also, do you feel like you have good resources to do the research? I mean, if you've got internet, you're probably set. But if you happen to have books at home or magazines or an expert in the house on a certain subject, those would count as resources also. So think about what feels comfortable and good for you. The project that I'm going to talk about today, just as the example, you do not have to do this one, but you can if you want is called Designing Spaces. And the reason why I picked it, this is what my brain was thinking. Um, oh, it's about architecture. My oldest son is an architect, um, is going to be an architect. He's an architecture major at the University of Texas, and he's going to graduate um, later in the year, well, in May. And so I've got a primary resource right there that I could use. Also, I've always been interested in architecture and buildings and design and how humans interact with those. And so I, it just seemed like an interesting one for me. So that's what I want your brain to be doing. It's like which research project would feel interesting and um, kind of spark me and make me want to stay committed to this project. Um, so that is step two. Step three Understand how the website is organized, because no matter which project you pick, they follow the same format. And once you understand that, let's say you choose a different project besides designing spaces, it still basically follows the same format. So you'll be just fine. And um, for Blue Bonnet Trail and Presidential Meadows, since we're IB candidate schools, I want to give you guys the agency to select the topic that is the most interesting to you. By no means do you have to do the one I'm telling you to do. So when you look at any of the projects, this is how they're organized. There's the theme, the overarching um, topic. 
each project has goals that they want you to achieve and they're listed out for you one by one. So you have very clear expectations. Um, there's a phase one, which is the learning experience part. I, in my brain, I think of it as the background information part. It's where you start kind of, you, it's, you, you're introduced to the topic and you get a good understanding for what it's about and um, what you're going to need to know to move forward. Um, and then there's phase two. And it's probably where the bulk of the project comes into play because it's the independent research project or research part of the project. Um, there's a product that you will produce at the end and create. And then there's the communication aspect of it. So if we had been in school or if we end up getting to go back to school, it's the part, it's the presentation part. It's where you show off what you've done to your teacher and your classmates and everyone. So that's how it's organized. And you'll find this on the website. By the way, I have linked this website multiple times throughout this document. So you always have access to that um, website and the hyperlink. Step four, begin working on phase one. Um, so what is that and what do I do? It's the learning experience phase. Um, the the website will guide you through this. It is going to list several activities. So if you were in my class, it, it's the sort of thing that we could do during like one class period. Um, it's the digging deeper, the asking the questions. It's like getting your brain to think about that topic. So for instance, if we were doing designing spaces, it would be questions like, how are architects like artists? How are architects like mathematicians? Um, we'd start looking at different types of architecture and um, take notes and reflect on those. And then you'd actually research some mathematical um, philosophies or laws that relate directly to architecture, like Fibonacci sequence and golden ratio. Um, and there are links in here to articles about those if you choose to do this project. So once you feel like you have a good understanding of what your project is kind of about and you have some of the background knowledge that you need, then you move into phase two. And phase two is where you start the big research part of the project. And if you're in my classes, you know we've talked about how to write research questions and how being able to quickly Google and find the answer is not a very rigorous research question. So what I added in this document was a short video, four minutes or so. You've got plenty of time to watch it. Um, and it's really good. It shows you how to write really strong research questions. The better question you write, the better your project and product are going to be. And also just the more you learn, which I think is the ultimate goal. Um, so your, your job is to decide what it is you want to research and generate these, let's say, five to ten strong questions that help guide your research. But then you're going to take that research and create a written report, although you can do that in um, a bunch of different ways. You can make a slideshow or a PowerPoint or a brochure or um, think of like a science fair, but do not go out and buy a science board, please. Um, it doesn't have to just be a typed document, but if you wanna do it in a Google document, you absolutely can. Um, and my kids in my class know that there's a way to connect to Google documents from our Google Classroom. Um, you could write it on a piece of paper though, with a pencil. We are not, there are no set rules on this. But you're going to have a written component, and then you're going to have the actual creative project that you make. And for designing spaces, it is to design and build a space. And that could be a blueprint print drawing. It could be um, an actual model that you make. It could be, um, I mean, you could get really creative with this. And again, there's no right or wrong way. We trust you, we know you're smart, we know you're creative, you got this. And then 
once you've done the, both of those things, the written one and the creative one, you need to be able to talk about it with someone. I mean, ideally it would be us, the teachers and your classmates. And um, I'm going to show you some options for that in the next slide. So then, so what you need to also do is communicate with your teacher. So what do, what do you do if you have questions? Contact us. We are here for you, I promise. So whatever way that your teacher has set up for you to get in touch with her, feel free to use that. Email her, Class Dojo, Google Classroom, Google, Google, Google Voice. There are, there are lots of ways that you can get in touch with us. We all have office hours that we've set up that we will definitely be available. But I'm sure that if you reach out to us, we will get back in touch with you within 24 hours, if not sooner. Um, so communicate with us throughout the project, when you're done with the project, before you start the project, anytime you want. Um, but what do you do when you're completed with it? So typically, you would bring it into school, right? And we we display it and have a showcase for you. What I what we want you to do is try to share the document or the slideshow or however you did your written report. Try to make sure that somehow we have um, eyes on it, visual. You can take a picture. You can upload your document. Um, there are lots of different ways. And then as far as the actual product, if you constructed something or built something or designed something, it depends on what, what task you pick. But for designing spaces, you're technically supposed to create a space. You were supposed to, like the project says create a space in the classroom or in your home. But you can do a scaled down model. It, it's, you, there are lots of options. And I'll, I'll add a list of what those could look like. But when you do that, if you can take a picture of it and upload it or send it to us in an email, that, that, that way we have visual reference of it. Plus, we just want to see the cool things that you do. So there's got to be a way for us to showcase that. Um, and then share it you know, with your family and the people that you are self-isolating with. I know there's not a lot right now, but you could um, show off what you've done and be proud of it. Um, I added some frequently asked questions because I um, these are just ones that I could think of. I'm sure you guys will have more because you always ask the best questions. But for now, these are the things I think you might be thinking. When is this due? Well, first of all, this is optional. You do not have to do this. But we wanted you to have it because we know a lot of you love to do projects like this. And if you do it, I'd like for us to see it by May 17th. That's the beginning of our last week of school. And so that would be a good time to say, oh, here's my project, I'm done. And we would still have time to share it with others before the school year ended. So I'm going to say May 17th. The other AIM teachers may have a different idea. And if so, we'll change it. But either way, don't worry. Do not worry. Um, what if I don't have things to use to make my product at home? Well, um, do the best you can. Try to check out those recycled goods. I love saving toilet paper tubes and paper towel tubes and the plastic containers that berries come in or a milk carton. Or go out in your yard if it's safe to do that and gather some sticks and leaves and Depending on what your project is, some of the projects, the things you create may all be online, and that is okay too. Whatever task you choose, just talk to your teacher about your ideas for what you want to do, and we'll help you with it. Um, do not, please, please, please do not feel like you have to go to Michael's or Walmart or HEB to buy things for this. We do not want you going out. We want you to stay at home, stay safe. That is the number one priority, not having a fancy project designed at all. So please hear me when I say that. Do not go buy anything extra for this. We want you to stay at home and stay safe. Um, do I have to do this? Absolutely not. No, you don't. This is optional. But 
I encourage you to because it's going to be fun. It's going to allow you to learn some new things and it's going to let you be creative. So it's just this perfect blend of um, what AIM students really are all about. Um, can I work with a partner? Typically, we the teachers would probably say yes, but these are unusual circumstances in different times. And I think you need to just work alone on this because certainly we're not going to be meeting face to face with anyone or in person. And so doing it um, at home just on your own, I think is going to be the best way. So those are the questions that I created that I thought you might have. Again, if you have any others or if your parents do, please contact um, the AIM teachers and we will get back to you. Um, so this document, the step-by-step, -step, is going to be on the AIM website. And so I want to show you, we've created a Google site called Mainer ISD AIM. And this is the teacher view. It's not going to look like this once we publish it. But you've got all of the AIM teachers here and um, our contact information. And then every grade level has a tab. And so fifth grade, you're going to have your own page and I'm going to be adding to it. Here's that document I just showed you right now. And we will um, be adding content constantly. So your place to check would be on the fifth grade section of this page. So I hope that wasn't too fast, but it's all in writing. You have the video to rewatch if you'd like, and we are here for you to reach out to via email, Google Classroom, Class Dojo, Google Voice, whichever one your teacher has set up for you. For my kids, it's pretty much all of those. So have fun with this. Learn a lot. Push yourself out of your comfort zone, which is what I'm doing today. Be a risk taker, um, but let's also be knowledgeable. Oh, let's be inquirers. I'm listing off all of the IB Learner profile attributes. But um, we believe in you. We miss you. And we want this to just be as good of an experience as it can be. So thanks, guys. I appreciate everything. And I'll be in touch soon. Bye.